Hello, I'm Eric Hurley. And I'm Kristen Lagana. Welcome to Anne Arundel County Week in Review. The political conventions are over and football season has begun. We'll give you the local angle on those events with today's show, as well as a look at the Drum Corps Championship and a plea for folks to work the polling booths in November. But first, making headlines. Across the country and here at home, Americans will remember September 11, 2001 and pay tribute to our troops and first responders. We want to remind folks that two events are scheduled around town so you can pay your respects. The first event is Saturday, September 8th at the World War II Memorial in Annapolis, just over the Naval Academy Bridge. The ceremony will be held at 8.30 a.m., followed by a day of service event where volunteers will join the Ocean Conservancy for a shoreline cleanup. And that's at Jonas Green Park. For more information, go to www.volunteerannarundel.org. Now, if you're looking for something a little more geared towards the events of September 11th, you can take the kids up to the county's memorial in Millersville. There are no formal events scheduled for Saturday the 8th, but the memorial is always open to the public and has several informational plaques that tell the story of that day. The memorial is made of actual beams from the World Trade Center, so it's really a good place to teach kids about what happened. On the actual anniversary, Tuesday, September 11th at 8.50 a.m., fire and police personnel will gather at the memorial for a moment of silence to mark the moment the first plane hit. The public is welcome to attend, so stop by on your way to work. Well, Kristen, I don't know if you know this, but as our midshipmen were out of town over there fighting the fighting Irish in Notre Dame in Ireland, their stadium was still packed for the first ever Drum Corps World Championship, which was held in Annapolis, and folks, it was quite a spectacle. The midshipmen, well, we don't need to repeat what happened to them, we all know, but there were plenty of winners at their stadium last weekend. Taking home the title were the Buccaneers of Reading, Pennsylvania, with a record high score of 99.03 out of 100. And Kristen, you got to listen to the name of some of these schools. In second place was the Minnesota Brass of St. Paul, Minnesota, followed by the Caballeros of Hawthorne, New Jersey, the Hurricanes of Seymour, Connecticut, the Cadets of Allentown, Pennsylvania, and the Kids Grove Scouts, all the way from Staffordshire in the United Kingdom. Our own Carolyn Ryan caught up with some of these organizations at the event and filed this report for us. Carolyn. Anne Arundel County had the distinct pleasure of hosting the 2012 Drum Corps Associates World Championships over the Labor Day weekend. And I am joined by Gil Silva and Alan Buell of the Drum Corps Associates and Connie Del Signor of the uh, Annapolis and Anne Arundel County Conference and Visitors Bureau and Senator John Astle. Thank you all for being on the show. Thank you for having us. Now, can you give us a little background on the Drum Corps Associates? Sure, we've been uh, uh, around for, this is our 48th year. In a couple of years, we'll be celebrating our 50th year. Uh, we're a, uh, a governing organization of drum and bugle corps throughout the country. Uh, we set up the rules, set up uh, the uh, schedules, and create the judges and all that. Um, we've been doing this, like I said, since 1964, and uh, we're looking very very look, looking very forward to the uh, 50th anniversary, which is coming up. Um, drum and bugle corps are family-oriented, all-age units uh, that come, fathers, sons, daughters, everyone's involved in it, and uh, it's a performance art uh, on a football field. Great. Now, tell us a little bit about this year's World Championships. Well, it was fantastic, and uh, if you missed this year, you must come next year because we've already signed a contract with Visit Annapolis to return. Uh, it's a fantastic county, beautiful city. They've welcomed us with open arms, and uh, we have celebrated all over the county with um, wonderful participation from the county with their offering their fields and their parks, and the folks in the neighborhoods came out and enjoyed the rehearsals, and we want them to do it again next year. Uh, it's just been a great experience, and we're, we're really thankful to everyone in the local community. Great. Now, how many bands did you have, or... Uh, do you call them bands or are they chords? I'm not chords. exactly sure. Drum, drum and bugle yeah. chords. How many yeah. did you have represented in this year's uh, World Championship? 34, I think, is the total when all combined. We have uh, mini chords, which uh, perform in the I and E on a Friday night. We had the uh, uh, the preliminaries, which are 21 uh, competing chords, and on Sunday we had the uh, 12 alumni chords, which are people that are going on an age but still want to do it at a limited air in a limited manner and then uh, the finals we had Sunday night and there were 14 left in the finals two classes open class and class a great, great. well thank you very much now 
Anne Arundel County has really uh, enjoyed a great uh, partnership with the Conference and Visitors Bureau. How did all of that come about? Well, events like this could not have happened without Rec and Park. Rick Anthony, amazing, and his team oh, baby, just allowing us and making plans for us to use the fields because DCA could not have been here without the 30 plus fields that they needed to have to use them for practice, to have them manicured and ready to go. So can't thank them enough. Speaker Bush was also involved in us organizing all of this. The other partner, of course, has been the Naval Academy and they helped us bring this event to Anne Arundel County. They've been wonderful. We use their, of course, the stadium for um, the preliminaries and for the finals and championships. It has been such an amazing partnership and it went so smoothly because of that. So the gentlemen you just spoke to are going to come back again next year, bring their group, and I think there'll be smiles on their faces from this year until next year, anticipating a great partnership yet again. It means dollars, it means jobs, and it means extended hours for people who have existing jobs. The restaurants and hotels are staying open late to 1 a.m. Shops are staying open till after 6, 7 p.m. in the evening. So people are being employed and hopefully a lot of sales were made yes. um, during that time. So it's phenomenal. Can't wait for next year. Great, great. And when we talk partnerships, thank you also for being involved, Senator Astle, in this great event. I was happy to uh, to be tangentially involved. I mean, I wasn't uh, in the nitty gritty, but I was always on the periphery in the event that issues cropped up where we needed an ombudsman, if you will, to help help resolve them. But I have to tell you, I think this is one of the most exciting things I've seen in this county in all the time I've lived here. We spend a lot of effort on on uh, athletics. This involved everybody, and it was a spectator sport that was just incredible. Uh, I played the drums in a high school marching band, so I, I had some idea of what uh, was going on, the, dri the, degree, the de degree of difficulty involved in the maneuvers that we watched on the, on the stadium uh, field. It's just incredible, and I am really excited about this coming back. I will also say from an economic development standpoint, as you just heard Connie mention, uh, these people came to visit, they stayed in our hotels, they ate in our restaurants, they brought their families, so it really was a boon for the county and the city. Well, very good. Now, great events like this. What about some other events and activities that are coming up in Anne Arundel County and in the Annapolis area? Well, of course, fall is a busy time for us. It's always Naval Academy football, Navy football. And we have the boat shows, sailboat and powerboat shows, the first two weekends in October. But for all of the events, there are events through our art galleries and cultural activities. Make sure everyone visits. Visit Annapolis.org. And there's a list of events and all the exciting things coming up within the next couple of months. All right. Well, thank you all for being on the show. And uh, congratulations on a great world, ch world championships and uh, for all kinds of activities and events coming up in Anne Arundel County. Go to visit Annapolis.org. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Carolyn. Obviously, these guys are much more than just a marching band. Congrats to all the teams for what we hear was a great show. Hey, I'm supposed to get the Spanish words. Why? You're Italian. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> That's because Italy's close it's to Spain closer. or something? I can pronounce them better than you. <laughs> yeah? Well, go right ahead. It's the caballeros, Eric. Say that, say that again? Caballeros. And do you do the little thing with your hand? Caballeros. You don't have to, but I'm Italian, so I talk with my hands. But it's Spanish. Oh, goodness. Do you know what caballeros means, Eric? Uh, sounds like something in a Cheerios box. <laughs> a caballero is a horse, but caballeros is not the same as that hated NFL team, with the big blue star that beat the Giants this week. Oh, that was pretty good. That was funny. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah. He has a funny joke. You're yeah, hilarious, funny. you know that? <laughs> <clears throat> well, let's see. Has to do with horses, but not cowboys. The Knights. I'll go with the Knights. That's correct. Oh, good job, Eric. Oh, yeah. Now, I want you to say caballeros and do that too. And do that little thing. Yeah, there, do it. Caballero, cab caballeros. Cabriere Rose. Uh, close enough. Role. It needs a little work. <laughs> Here's another Spanish word for you. A bote. That's an easy one. What'd you, you call say me? bote? What'd you call me? Say bote. Bote. And that means boat. Yeah, now, well, how would you like to have another place to launch your bote? A bote. A bote. All oh, right. Why yes. do you do that with the bote thing? A bote. Thing? All right, whatever. <laughs> you need to check out a public meeting set for Kinder Park on September 20th. The purpose of the meeting is to go over a planned launch for kayaks and canoes at Beechwood Park just south of Magathy Bridge Road. As we've reported before, a new boat ramp will be built at Fort Smallwood Park. 
but park officials are trying to add as many boat access sites as possible. Good for our area, right? It's a good thing. Yeah. Beachwood Park is more than 100 acres and could be another perfect site to launch. For more information about the meeting, go to www.aacounty.org and click on Recreation and Parks under Agencies. But there's more weekend review to come, folks, including our interview with Elections Chief. Hey, eh? how's that? That do okay hey. there? <laughs> our Elections Chief, Joe Torrey, is coming up. But first, take a look at our community calendar for upcoming events around the county. Stay with us. We'll be right back. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just as you are. And welcome back, folks. Well, last week you saw the Democratic National Convention, and the week before that you saw the Republican National Convention. So that means one thing. Elections are right around the corner, and who better to talk about elections in Anne Arundel County than our own Director of the Elections, Board of Elections, Joe Torrey. Joe, thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Thank you for inviting me today. Well, Joe, we're getting close to November. A lot of folks... Uh, are very excited about this presidential election. A lot of folks really want to turn out. Seems like a lot of enthusiasm out there between within the public's mind. Right. Uh, generally, uh, uh, this is one of our biggest elections that we have, a presidential general election. We usually have an 80% turnout. We're predicting the 84% turnout here in Anne Arundel County. And we talk about these high turnouts, and one thing that's happened in Maryland over the last couple of years is the, the, uh, the addition of early voting, where folks can actually come out two weeks before the election and cast their ballot at uh, certain centers around the county. Tell us a little bit about that. That's very important. I'm glad that you brought that up. It's very important this year because um, we're going to have a long ballot this year, and early voting is going to help us uh, with our wait times uh, on Election Day. Um, early voting was instituted not to increase turnout or voter registration, but to get the participation out before Election Day so we don't have uh, long lines. We have five early voting centers uh, in Anne Arundel County, and I have to uh, cheat a little bit here with the addresses <laughs> we, where we, we are. We don't mind at all. <laughs> but um, I do want to tell our, all of our citizens where they are and the times that they're open. There's five early voting centers and are located throughout the county. We have one at the West County Library, which is at Annapolis Road in Odington, North County Library at Eastway in Glen Burnie, uh, the Severna Park Library in Severna Park, the Boys and Girls Club in Annapolis, and the Edgewater Library in Edgewater. Um, the times that we're going to be uh, voting, we're going to vote uh, 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. on Saturday, October 27th. That will be our first day of early voting. 12 noon to 6 p.m. on Sunday. Yes, we're open on Sunday. October 28th and then we'll be open 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday October 29th through Thursday November 1st mm. and I encourage folks to come out and, and join us uh, in our early voting sites that'll help us on, on election day. Absolutely and because we have um, a lengthy ballot this year we've got seven statewide questions correct and yes. 15 local questions yes. so it's definitely a benefit to look at your specimen ballot be familiar with the issues at hand Make sure you have that specimen ballot with you. But another great tool that voters can use this year is this is the first year you can register and update your registration online, correct? Yes, that's correct, Kristen. Thanks. Those two points are very good to bring up. Um, one, with our long ballot, uh, as you know, we do send out a specimen ballot to every registered voter in the county. And right now we have approximately 365,000 registered voters in the county. So we're going to send a specimen ballot out to every one of our voters. We encourage, because of those questions, because of having the seven and the 15 questions, those 22 questions, we encourage our voters to take that specimen ballot, read it, comprehend it, vote their choices on that ballot, and bring it with them on Election Day. Because that will really help with our lines in early voting and on Election Day, which is November 6th. So if they'll do that for us, we would really appreciate that. Uh, the questions are, are, are long. Uh, on the voting unit, we're going to have nine pages on the voting unit. So it's going to take a long time for some, if they're first seeing those questions, to read them. 
The other good point that you brought up, Kristen, is that online voter registration. Yes, this is the first time we've been talking about this for years to bring this, uh, to institute this in the state. And now if you have a Maryland driver's license or if you have a Maryland ID card issued by the uh, Motor Vehicle Administration, you can go online and register to vote. What we're doing, we're pulling the signature off your driver's license as a signature for your application. Mm -hmm. Uh, and what we're doing with that, uh, that can be submitted to us electronically. If you don't have a Maryland ID or uh, a, a driver's license issued by the Motor Vehicle Administration, you can go online, you can type in the information, print it out, and mail it to our office in Glen Burnie. So. Well, Joe, we, we talk about early voting, and that's great. I, you know, we're going to have a lot of folks that show up early and they vote. They get that out of the way so they don't have to show up on Election Day. But there's a lot of old timers out there that have been voting for years and years and years that they just like to cast their ballot on Tuesday, whatever that Election Day is. Um, when those polls open up, it takes a lot. It takes a lot of work from your staff. You guys do a wonderful yes. job getting everything ready, building up to that election. But we also need citizens, and we need citizens to be election judges. And how are we doing with our election judges this year? That's a very good point because election judges in Anne Arundel County, we hired 2,800 election judges to man our 189 precincts. It's quite a task for our office. We open up like a little personnel office. So we have 15 employees down wow. there uh, making calls and <coughs> we do soliciting, we do posting of signs. Um, we do still need election judges. Uh, we take Democrats, Republicans, Independents. Um, so please call our office. Our office phone number is 410-222-6600. Uh, call our office and ask for election judge department. So we are in need of election judges. We're doing fairly well right now because of the outreach we have. We, have. we also hire 200 standby election judges for election day. And those standby election judges, they're anything that can happen to our families, a death in the family or someone sick and they just can't show up. So I have 200 on standby, 100 Democrats, 100 Republicans and several independents mm -hmm. that we, uh, we have ready to go. But uh, please uh, call in our office, 410-222-6600 uh, and we'll be glad to talk to you about hiring you as election judge. Well, we know you and uh, David and all the folks at the Board of Elections do a great job, and it's not just one day every couple years that they're working. They're working around the clock, right. keeping our voter registration rolls updated, preparing for upcoming elections, and dealing with all the other issues that come with uh, running our very complicated uh, but very efficient Board of Elections here in Anne Arundel County. So, Joe, good luck on Election Day. Good luck uh, getting everything ready in the next month or two. And, Thank folks, you. we're going to go ahead and take a break, and when we come back, we'll have more Week in Review. Stay with us. Welcome to my block party. Glad you can make it. The only triple doubles you get come with fries. Last time you blocked someone, you were online. I can do this all day. Your moves are just gay. <laughs> Using gay to mean dumb or stupid, not cool. Not cool. Not in my house, not anywhere. It's not creative. It's offensive to gay people. And you're better than that. Well, here at Week in Review, you just never know who's going to stop by the show. And, of course, it's my former co-host, Carla Schaefer and Carolina. Welcome to the show. Carolina's been talking over here for about she a has. minute or so. And we just wanted to welcome you back and welcome this beautiful little baby girl into the world. Thank you, Eric. And thank you, Kristen. So it's good to be back. Yeah. Tell us about being a mom. Ah, uh, It's good. It's, it's definitely, you know, different. It's a new experience. But, uh, you know, it's... It's one that I wouldn't trade for the world. Absolutely. You know, and it's it's one that I never would have imagined. I would love her as much as I do, and she's my best friend. And Aww. yeah, you look great. What's your secret? <laughs> uh, chasing after this one. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Well, we can review. We teach people a lot of good habits up here. So while she was my co-host, she did a lot of good things, and we a lot of the goodness rubbed off on her. Carolina, how's she doing as a mom? Oh, you're yawning. You oh. must be tired. Does she keep you up late at night? Do you stay? Did you stay up late last night and watch the football game? She did not. Oh. She did not. Well, I got to ask the one important question everybody wants to know out here. Yeah. Is she going to be a Michigan fan? Of course. <laughs> of course. Yes, yeah, she has a Michigan oh, onesie. I thought there was still oh, hope for you, hatch. Caroline. I thought oh, there was no, still she's, hope for you. She's excited to be a Michigan fan. Um, she was watching Greg Madison. Nice. You know, there you go. the former Ravens coach. Right. So there's... There's a connection there. There's hope there. Well, you're looking great. 
She's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Thank the you. The only thing is, we wish your name was Erica, but Carolina oh, yeah. is a <laughs> beautiful thing, name. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by. Yeah, thank Come you by for anytime. Having we both certainly of us. miss you on Week in Review. Yeah. I mean, I had to go with this one as a replacement. Oh, Kristen's so, doing an know. excellent job. Thank you. She's doing an excellent job. I like Kristen her. Is doing Maybe an amazing go. job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All three of us will host. Oh, yeah. three of us. <laughs> it's, the, it's the ladies' review here on Week in Review. That's right. <laughs> Good to see you, Carla. Good to you see too. you. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and send it to break. Welcome back. This week we had a real tragic death of a child who swallowed his father's methadone. Public Information Officer Justin Mulcahy has details on the case. Justin. The caller advised that the child accidentally took methadone, was not breathing, and indicated that CPR was being performed on that child. Patrol officers arrived on the scene and spoke with the child's father who handed officers a bottle of pink liquid that he indicated was methadone. The investigation revealed that the methadone was purchased illegally. Fire department personnel on scene immediately took over resuscitation efforts and successfully revived the child, who was then transported to Baltimore Washington Medical Center. Now, further investigation revealed the presence of additional quantities of illegal drugs inside of that home. At that point, patrol supervision contacted the district tactical narcotics team for assistance. The team then obtained a search and seizure warrant for that address. Upon execution of that search warrant, members of the Western District Tactical Narcotics Team found suspected cocaine, marijuana, heroin, and methamphetamine in sufficient enough quantity to indicate distribution. Officers also found additional quantities of methadone. Further searches revealed a loaded 357 Magnum and a 22 caliber rifle. Now, as a result of the investigation, the child's father, Paul Christopher Brooks, age 28 of 1222 Reese Road in Severn, Maryland, he was charged with possession with intent to distribute cocaine, marijuana, heroin, and methamphetamine. Also charged with possession of methadone, cocaine, marijuana, heroin, and methamphetamine, along with two counts of possession of a firearm and commission of a drug trafficking crime, and one count of firearm accessible to a minor. Charges are continuing to be pending against an additional suspect, and the investigation is ongoing into possible child neglect charges as well. Folks, we're going to move on now to a public service announcement. Effective July 10th of 2012, legislation was enacted by Congress, which added a total of 26 synthetic drugs under the Controlled Substances Act. Synthetic marijuana has been sold under a variety of names such as K2, K3, Spice, and Genie. The addition of these chemicals to Schedule 1 of the Controlled Substances Act will be included as part of the Food and Drug Administration Safety and Innovation Act. Schedule 1 substances are considered to have a high potential for abuse. In addition to scheduling the 26 drugs, the new law would double the length of time a substance may be temporarily placed in Schedule 1 from 18 to 36 months. Now, aside from explicitly naming 26 substances, the legislation creates a new definition for cannabimimetic agents, creating criteria by which similar chemical compounds are controlled. Synthetic marijuana, which has been around since 2002, has become increasingly popular in the last few years. It's often marketed throughout the United States as an herbal incense or potpourri. Product packaging indicates that the substance is novelty incense and is not for human consumption. However, the warning is not being taken seriously by many young people. Synthetic marijuana is usually smoked like conventional marijuana and the plant material itself is a mixture of dried herbs and flowers, some of which may have their own psychoactive effects. Some products consist of plant material laced with synthetic cannabinoids, which mimic marijuana effects when they're smoked. In recent years, there has been a steady increase in the number of reported cases to the emergency room and poison control centers. Now, according to the DEA, the American Association of Poison Control Centers received 6,959 calls for synthetic marijuana incidents in the year 2011. It's important to point out those who manufacture, sell, or use synthetic drugs will be subject to the same penalties as other Schedule I drugs such as cocaine and marijuana. Penalties include possession of one of the new Schedule I controlled dangerous substances. You could face up to four years and up to a $25,000 fine also for distribution or possession with intent to distribute any of these new Schedule I controlled dangerous substances. An individual could face up to 20 years and a $25,000 fine. 
In addition, the state may seize and seek to forfeit cash, vehicles, or other property associated with the possession or distribution of controlled dangerous substances. Now, folks, as always, if you have any information on any crimes or suspects mentioned on the show, don't hesitate to call, email, or text your tip to Metro Crime Stoppers Hotline. It's available 24 hours a day, toll free at 1 866 7 Lockup. Or you can text message MCS plus your message to crimes at 274 637. Your third option, visit the website at www.metrocrimestoppers.net. As always, remember phone calls are not recorded and callers remain anonymous. You might also be eligible for a cash reward of up to $2,000. Back to you. Thanks, Justin. Sounds like this child was living in a really dangerous environment. This week, the Anne Arundel County Fire Department responded to more than 1,432 calls for service. This included 1,180 emergency medical calls and 98 fire calls. Two people were killed and another person was injured in two separate accidents. Division Chief Michael Cox of the Anne Arundel County Fire Department has more. Chief. Thanks, Kristen. The first incident occurred just after 10 p.m. on Friday, August 31st, 2012, when Anne Arundel County firefighters responded for a reported motor vehicle collision in the 3700 block of Patuxent River Road in the Davisonville area of the county. The first unit to arrive on the scene reported a single vehicle collision, a car versus a tree, with entrapment of both occupants in the vehicle. Firefighters utilizing hydraulic rescue tools worked about 15 minutes to free the trapped occupants. The occupants, a female estimated to be in her early to mid-30s and a male estimated to be in his mid to late teens, suffered life-threatening injuries as a result of the incident. The female patient was transported to the University of Maryland's R. Adams Cowley Shock Trauma Unit in Baltimore via State Police Helicopter Priority 1. The male patient was transported via the United States Park Police Helicopter to the Prince George Trauma Center in Chevrolet, Maryland. Both of the patients involved succumbed to their injuries on Saturday, September 1, 2012. In a second incident, Anne Arundel County firefighters were again called to the scene of another serious accident just before 8 a.m. on Sunday, September 2, 2012. In this case, a fire department staff officer traveling through the area of Muddy Creek Road and Conti's Wharf Road in the Edgewater area discovered the accident. In this case, a pickup truck had left the roadway and rolled over, trapping the driver in the vehicle. It took firefighters working on the scene about 10 minutes to free this trapped occupant who had suffered serious but non-life-threatening injuries. The patient, a 47-year-old male, was airlifted to the University of Maryland R. Adams Cowley Shock Trauma Center in Baltimore via Maryland State Police Helicopter. Kristen? Thanks, Chief. County law enforcement officials have determined that the driver overshot a turn, causing the vehicle to leave the roadway and strike a tree. It is unclear if speed or alcohol were involved in this incident and that the investigation is still ongoing. Well, folks, do you know someone or are you living with a chronic condition? We have information on how you can get help. Our own Mary Felter from the Department of Aging and Disabilities talks with Pat Toomey from the Anne Arundel Medical Center about their living well with chronic conditions. Mary. Thank you. Today my guest is Pam Toomey, who is the coordinator of our Living Well with Chronic Conditions at the Anne Arundel County Department of Aging and Disabilities. Welcome to the program, Pam. It's nice to have you back. Thank you, Mary. It's nice to be here. I know that you've got um, two free workshops coming up that mm -hmm. you're doing with Anne Arundel Medical Center. Mm -hmm. So I asked you in for uh, information about this. Sure. We're actually starting um, two workshops at Anne Arundel Medical Center the first week in October. We're doing one in the afternoon on Tuesday afternoons, and we're doing one in the evening, Wednesday evening. So, and those workshops will each go for six weeks. And you're doing it in that kind of schedule so people who are employed and work during the day, they can fit this in their schedule. Absolutely. Yep, one in the afternoon and one in the evening for those people who might work during the day. And this is for people who have chronic conditions of some sort. Can you let me know more about what a chronic condition is? Yep, a chronic condition actually is a medical condition that can cause suffering and the loss of physical abilities over a long period of time. Unfortunately, there is not a cure for um, a lot of chronic conditions, but it is controlled by the symptoms and how well those symptoms are managed. So a chronic condition can be anything from high cholesterol to high blood pressure to COPD to um, you know, coronary heart failure, um, coronary artery disease, um, can be MS, Parkinson's, those are all uh, chronic diseases. And arthritis also? 
Absolutely, arthritis. We see a lot of folks with arthritis in our workshop. So what are you going to be um, letting them learn how to do? What are the benefits of this program exactly? Well, again, what I said earlier is we teach people how to manage the symptoms that go along with a chronic condition. So it's interesting because we can bring a variety of people together. Everybody has a different chronic condition, yet everybody experiences the same symptoms. So everybody experiences the chronic fatigue, the pain, the isolation, the depression, the tense muscles. So we really focus on those and get people uh, feeling better and uh, learning how to manage those conditions. Um, do people come for just one class or do they have to come for all six classes and how long did they last? Well, we, the workshops go six, uh, six weeks in a row and they meet once a week for two and a half hours. So we really um, want people to come to each session, all six sessions. And the time goes very fast. We have a nice break in between, serve a healthy snack. So the classes move along quite, uh, quite quickly. I understand you also have some sort of a booklet that you give people. Um, we do, we have a textbook. It's quite a uh, lofty textbook. So that is free and that goes along with when you take the class. Are people uh, reacting well to this program? We've had an unbelievably good response to this program. And you know, every week we teach it, we teach different topics. One week we talk about healthy eating. Another week we'll talk about communication and how to communicate with your family when you're not feeling well. How to communicate with your physician is a big one. And we talk about appropriate questions to ask your physician when you go mm -hmm. in there so that you can get the most out of your class. Um, we also teach a lot about uh, relaxation. We teach yeah. deep breathing techniques. So um, every week there's uh, a variety of different topics and uh, it's just really a good um, well-being class. I remember after my heart attack, which has now been over 20 years ago, I went and took the cardiac rehab program at the hospital and then I learned about yoga and the deep breathing and that did seem to help a great deal. It makes a big difference and it's proven that it will act you know, absolutely decrease your and lower your um, blood pressure. There's a, a title to this. It's like a self-evident course or something like that? Yeah, it's actually an evidence-based program and the program is actually written by Stanford University, Stanford in, in California. And the evidence-based means that the program has been tested and the research has been done. So the program actually is proven to work. So they ran about a thousand participants through the program and um, they had really good results. They had those people that stayed the course and took the program six weeks actually had um, less trips to their doctor less trips to the ER, and an overall improved well-being. So it's really a good program. I know that you ask people after they've completed the course their opinion of it. You have kind of like a little survey or something. What are some of the comments that they've made to you? Um, well, it, it really becomes like a support group for those folks that have chronic conditions. And um, one woman said it was life-changing for her. She was you know, feeling very depressed and isolated, so it opened up whole, a whole new door for her. Um, we've had other people just thank us for creating an atmosphere where everybody can come together and share. And that's a big, a big part of it because it is taught by two facilitators, but yet there's a lot of interaction amongst the group members. So it just becomes really an open forum to, um, to share and to learn. I understand in the very beginning when you just started this course, there was a gentleman who couldn't really walk very well. And then by the time the course was over, you found that he was much more erect and was able to do this. Absolutely. He came to the first class and walked with a walker, actually a cane. And by week six, he walked unassisted. So we talk about strengthening exercises and we demonstrate a lot of the strengthening exercises that are in the textbook. And um, so every week he just kept working on his strengthening exercises. And by week six, the end of the class, he walked out unassisted. Sounds like you really followed the action plan. <laughs> exactly, exactly. We know that's a big part of the class, setting uh, an action plan and a lot of goal setting. That's really what keeps the class moving forward. What are some, what's the way that someone can sign up for this class? Should they call you directly or sign up on a line? Or? There's, a, there's a variety of different ways. They can sign up online if they go through um, the Anne Arundel County Department of Aging, and that website is www.aacounty.com dot org forward slash aging and they can just put a check mark in there on the class that they want to attend or they can call me that's very easy and my number is 410-222-4366
And they can ask for Pam Toomey. And again, it's free. It is free. Yep. Well, and we're, we're very thankful to the hospital because the hospital buys all the books for us. So we're very oh. appreciative of uh, Anne Arundel Medical Center um, and their partnership with the it's Department of It's going to be in the Health Sciences Pavilion, correct? Yep, it is up on the beautiful seventh floor. Yes. Well, thank you so much, Pam, for coming on the program today and talking about the Living Well with Chronic Conditions programs that you're going to be presenting. Thank you, Mary. Nice to be here. This is Mary Felter, Public Information Officer for Anne Arundel Medical. Oh, I am not for Anne Arundel Medical. Sorry, for Anne Arundel County Department of Aging and Disabilities. Maybe I better sign up for your course. <laughs> I, I think you might need to, Mary. <laughs> Thanks very much. Back to the studio. Thanks, Mary. It sounds like a great program. Well, here's something to smile about. Fair season is not over, folks, and our correspondents and constituent services are pounding the pavement to find the good ones. Up first is our Kelsey McConkie out in Linthicum to preview its fair. Kelsey? This is Kelsey McConkie with Week in Review. I'm here with Brenda and Sandy with the Linthicum Community Fair. Um, Sandy, can you tell us a little bit about where and when the fair will take place? The fair is going to be Saturday, September the 29th from 10 to 3 right here on this field which is St. John's Lutheran Church Field at the corner of Hammonds Ferry and Maple Road in Linthicum. And we're going to have all kinds of fun going on on this field. It's not going to quite look as empty as it is today. Now what is the history of the fair here in Linthicum? The fair was started over 20 years ago by the pastor of the church, the Reverend Gilroy. And it was a basically started to bring the community churches together to have a good time and raise some money for charity. And the fair's expanded over the years. We've added lots of different things to the fair. Uh, we've added a parade, we've added crafts, we've added uh, entertainment, we've added rides. So the fair has really grown over the past 20 some years. Is there anything special at the fair this year? Yes, it is. We're very happy to welcome back once again the Coast Guard Silent Drill Team. There are members of the Honor Guard for the Coast Guard and they will be performing precision uh, rifle throwing and marching and different things like that on the field. So we're very happy to welcome the Silent Drill Team back once again to the fair. And Brenda, you're the chairperson of the crafts at the fair. Can you give us a little bit more about the crafts? Yes, I'm one of the uh, several subcommittee chairs. We have people in charge of the parade and the nonprofits and many other aspects. But with the crafts, uh, we have approximately 30 crafters. And the, what makes it special at the Linthicum Community Fair is that everything is handmade by the crafters themselves. They're not allowed to bring anything that's made by anyone else um, or made in other countries. It's all handmade by local people. And we have crafters from Linthicum and Brooklyn and Glen Burnie and one from as far away as Pennsylvania. So we have the entire area covered. I brought some just to show that we have a variety of things, the necklace and the scarf. Uh, we have woodwork. We have plastic canvas, um, new this year from our plastic canvas crafter, our bottle covers. She has water bottle covers. Um, we have a lot of jewelry. Uh, we have hair ribbons. We have all sorts of things that are made by local crafters. Thank you. And would you like to remind everyone again when and where the fair will be held? The fair will be held right here on St. John's Field, the corner of Hammonds Ferry and Maple Roads in Linthicum, and it is Saturday, September the 29th. The fair is from 10 to 3. The parade will start at 9 o'clock, leaving from Lindale and proceeding down Hammonds Ferry Road to the fairgrounds. Could we just add, Sandy, I don't think you mentioned that our theme this year is celebrating children, and there will be a variety of activities for children, and the theme of the floats in the parade is celebrating children, and we will be giving out coupons through the community churches and the schools so that the children can come and do various activities and get prizes or little treats free. Sounds wonderful. Hope everyone comes out to the Lithicum Community Fair. Back to you in the studio. Nice job, Kelsey. Not to be outdone, Mark Chang is out in Jessup for Jessup Day. Mark. Thanks to both of you in the studio. I'm out here over in Jessup, and with me today I have a couple of the organizers who are going to be organizing Jessup Day, which is an annual event, a great event out here in the Jessup area. With me today are Rusty Bristow and Dana Herbert, who both are community activists out in this area who are on the board of the Jessup Improvement Association. So thanks to you both for being on the show and telling us a little about Jessup Day. 
First of all, let's start off with you, Rusty. Could you tell us what the dates and times are for the Jessup Day? Yeah, it's going to be Saturday the 29th from 11 to 4 p.m. and the parade will start at 1 o'clock. And the food that we're going to have is going to be pizza, sausage, chicken wings, funnel cakes, snowballs, cotton candy, sodas, and water. And we're going to have a few new attractions this year. It's going to be a, a corn hall, and we're also going to have a beer garden. It'll start at 2 p.m. And a bluegrass band called Keep Off the Grass will be entertaining everybody. Okay, great. Thanks a lot, Rusty, for all that information and all the new attractions that are coming around. And speaking of new stuff, I uh, understand, Dana, that you're going to be chairing a new, a new event or a new type of program for Jessup Day. Could you tell us about that? First of all, Mark, thanks for having Rusty and I here today to promote our Jessup Day. Yes, we're going to have a new event this year. It's, um, we're going to crown a little Miss Jessup um, this year. Um, it's for girls ages uh, between 5 and 10. And uh, this is not a beauty pageant, Mark, and this is not a talent contest. The little girl who lives in the boundaries of, of JIA, um, who raises the most money for JIA, will be announced the winner at 1145 here on Jessup Day, which is the 29th of September. And we will be giving her a crown, a pretty little crown. Um, we're going to give her flowers, beautiful roses, um, gifts, and also a check for her future education. She will also be riding in the parade that day. I hope to be able to find her a a uh, convertible great. and also um, I think the Maryland Gazette is going to put her picture in the paper. Okay great. Well that sounds very exciting and um, in addition to all the food and the uh, crowning of Miss Jessup, uh, could you tell us about the crafters and vendors that are going to be there? Yes in fact Mark I'm going to read this to you because there's so many wonderful okay. vendors coming out this year but we're going to have Tastefully Simple, Tupperware, Dove Chocolates, Pampered Chef, Sansi, Lilies of the Valley, they do custom bags, um, Avon, Mishi, 31 Gifts, Mary Kay, Party Light, for those who like candles, Origami Owl, plus we'll have uh, wood crafts, we'll have crocheted and embroidered items, and also jewelry. Also, there will be a bake sale going on inside the hall. Okay, great. Thanks a lot, Dana. And let's, uh, let's talk a little about the parade. Could you tell us about some of the entries that are going to be in the parade this year? Yeah, this year we'll have a, um, a lineup of antique cars. Uh, marching bands. I'm, I'm, I've contacted five, but I'm hoping at least three of them do make it. Um, fire trucks, politicians, some will be walking the parade route, they tell me, the scouts, and also horses. Okay, great. Well, a lot to fit into a parade route. Could you tell us uh, a little bit about the parade route, how long it is or where, where it winds through? Well, I, I'm not exactly sure how long the parade will be. Okay. It depends on how many entries we have, but okay. th this will be the route. The parade will proceed east on Montevideo Road, south on Race Road, West on Orchard and South on Wiggly Avenue, ending up here at the Jessup Hall driveway. Okay, great. And uh, you all got a great hall out here. Uh, it's a great place for the community to get together and meet. And uh, under my understanding, there's going to be a little ceremony for the hall. Could you tell us about that? Yeah, sometime after the parade, maybe around 2.30ish, um, we're going to dedicate this hall to the wonderful man who saved the hall from demolition many, many years ago. Um, we're very grateful for the time and energy they put into saving the, uh, the building. Of course, without it, we would not be here holding our Jessup Day event on 29 September and many of the, of the other functions that we hold for the community every year. So we're going to have a plaque dedicated to these men. Okay, great. And uh, if viewers out there want more information about Jessup Day, how can they get a hold of you? Yes, the uh, chairman uh, could be here today. Her name is Teresa Winkelmeyer, and you can contact Teresa on 410-707-8429. And if you're interested in being in our vendor and crafter sale, you can con contact me, Dana Herbert, and I, I can be reached on 410-796-7999. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much, Dana. And Rusty, come back over here. Thank you very much, Rusty, for all the information on Jessup Day. Well, this is a wonderful annual event, so please mark your calendars for Saturday, September 29th. Come on out to the west side of the county over in Jessup, and I'm sure you'll have a great time. Reporting from Jessup for Anne Arundel County Weekend Review, back to you in the studio. Thanks, Mark. Well, which one will it be, Linthicum or Jessup? Maybe both. I mean, both have food and good times, right? That's all you need, I That's hear. Right. Food and good times, <laughs> our own... Kristen Lagana, Food Woo! and Good Times. <laughs> and don't forget the County Fair, which is this week in Crownsville. Believe it or not, folks, the fair is celebrating its 60th, yes, yeah, 60th anniversary. Admission is free on opening night, which is September 12th, starting at 4 p.m. And there's all kinds of good stuff on tap, including cash giveaways, the Arundel Idol singing competition, the cutest kid contest, and all those 4-H kids with their cows, sheep, and horses. Of course, there's way more than that. 
There's camel rides. Who doesn't like camel rides? How about the antique tractor pull? And there's so much cool stuff. I think my son Brandon and I will have to check out those fame car races. What's your favorite thing about fairs, Kristen? I mean, there's so many good things there going are, on. There are, you know, it just puts you in a good mood the second you get there. It does. And of course, I love that we have recycling available at the fairs. So your favorite thing about fairs <laughs> is there's a recycling booth? Come on. All right, no, like you Come said, on. I love the food. I mean, who the doesn't food. love fair food? You want to yeah. get your funnel cake. You yeah, want to make sure cake. chocolate dipped anything or whatever on a stick. But yeah. I got to be honest. I had some really good Chinese food at the fair last year. You ate Chinese food I at the fair. I had Chinese food. It, my nose brought me right to the booth. It smelled that's so like good. That's like going to... I, I know. That's like going to Chinatown <laughs> and getting Italian food. I, I mean, know. What are you or a funnel cake. What I don't know. It just smelled really good, and I thought, I'm going to give this a try. I might pay for it later, mm -hmm. but it was great. It was so good. And, folks, so. I, I understand. This just in, uh, I guess, got, a, <laughs> guess got something in my ear. I understand last year, our own Kristen Lagana got a special kiss at I the did. fair. Tell I us did. about the kiss. Did you go to a kissing oh, booth? Is that so what it was? It wasn't your typical kissing oh, booth, Eric. Oh, it wasn't a typical kissing no, booth. No, I met not. the love of my life. Oh, my gosh. He was a camel. And a he what? was the cutest camel ever. A cute camel? A cute camel. So Gave if you, you a go, kiss at the yes. Fair. And I've already confirmed that the same camel is going to be back. So I'm mm -hmm. definitely going to check it out. I hope Papa Lagana is watching this show. <laughs> and he just heard what happened to his daughter at the fair. And that camel, that camel better watch out because Papa Lagana is coming for you. He'll spit on Papa Lagana. <laughs> yeah, don't say that. Don't say that. Well, a lot of great fun in the fair. It's always a great time out there at the Anne County Fair. So get out there in Crownsville next week. And folks, that's going to wrap up this week's edition of Week in Review. You can watch this episode online anytime at www.aacounty.org. Archive episodes are always available at blip.tv and on YouTube. And you can subscribe to the free, yet free video podcast at iTunes or like us on Facebook at a Rumble TV. Please tune in again next week for more news and highlights from around your county. We'll see you next time. Go out.